Hi, in today's class, we'll be discussing about the different modes of transport of carbon dioxide. This question is usually asked as a short essay of 8 marks and it belongs to the competency PY 6.3. Now, how do we approach a question like this? So first of all, we can write a small introduction regarding how carbon dioxide transport occurs or what is the general direction of transport of carbon dioxide and we can also mention about the normal values. So, carbon dioxide transport is transported by blood from tissue to alveoli and then from the alveoli to the air. And how much of carbon dioxide is transported? Under normal resting conditions, an average of 4 ml of carbon dioxide is transported from the tissue to the lungs in each 100 ml of blood. Now, before moving on to the topic proper, we should also mention about how carbon dioxide is taken up. That is how carbon dioxide diffuses from the tissues to the blood. So, we, we know that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the tissues is around 46 millimeters of mercury. And in the interstitial fluid, it is around 45 millimeters of mercury. Now, when arterial blood reaches the tissues, we know that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the arterial blood is just 40 millimeters of mercury. So, we know that there is a difference of around 5 millimeters of mercury because of which the carbon dioxide will diffuse from the tissues to the blood. And that is why in the, at the venous end, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 millimeters of mercury. So, this is how the uptake takes place, uptake from the tissues to the blood by diffusion. Now, this, the carbon dioxide which is taken up must be transported in the blood. And this occurs by three forms. And one, one form of transport of carbon dioxide is in the dissolved form. So about 0.3 ml of 100 ml of blood is transported in the dissolved form. And it is about 7% of the total carbon dioxide which is transported. The next important form of transport is in the form of bicarbonate ion. Around 70% of carbon dioxide is transported in the bicarbonate ion form. So, how, how, what are the reactions for this? So, we can see that here carbon dioxide is taken up from the interstitial fluid to the red blood cell. Now, what happens to this carbon dioxide? It combines with water in the presence of enzyme carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. And then, this carbonic acid dissociates into H plus and bicarbonate. And, and then what happens? This dissociated hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion will then be taken up into further reactions. What are they? The H plus ion will combine with hemoglobin to form this uh, combination with hemoglobin, whereas bicarbonate will be shifted out of the RBC and chloride will be taken up. And this channel is known as anion exchanger 1. This phenomenon of exchange of bicarbonate for chloride is known as Hamburger phenomenon or chloride shift. So let's just uh, just revise what, whatever it is said now. Dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood reacts with water to form carbonic acid. It is catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase. It accelerates its reaction to around 5000 fold. And the carbonic acid formed in red cells dissociates to H plus in bicarbonate ion. The bicarbonate ion diffuses from RBC to the plasma while chloride will be exchanged for it. And this occurs via the exchanger ion exchanger 1. And the hydrogen ion will combine with hemoglobin. So that was about transport of carbon dioxide in the bicarbonate form which is a major form of transport. Next. Carbon dioxide is also transported in combination with hemoglobin and plasma proteins. That accounts for about 30% of transport. So, carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. And that's how it is transported in this form. It also combines with plasma proteins to get transported. So, those were the three major transport uh, methods of transport of carbon dioxide. Now, we can draw a diagram uh, showing all the three forms. So here we can see that from the cell, the carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood and of which 7% is transported in the dissolved form. A 
Seventy percent is transported, combining with water to form carbonic acid, and then it uh, dissociates into H plus and bicarbonate, and uh, uh, this is the chloride shell. And then the around 30, 30, 23 to 30% of carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin to form carbamino hemoglobin. So this is a diagram from uh, Guyton and Hall textbook of physiology, which is which can easily be drawn during the exam. And now for some additional scoring points, you can also mention an applied aspect of chloride shape. We've already learned this in our practical classes that hematocrit of venous blood is normally 3% greater than that of the arterial blood. And this is because of chloride shift. And we can also mention the importance of this uh, dissolved amount of carbon dioxide in the acid-base balance of body fluids. We can also mention a word or two about the carbon dioxide dissociation curve and the Haldane effect, which we will be uh, taking later in a separate module. So I hope this topic is clear about how to approach such a question. We can uh, write about the uh, basic introduction showing the general direction of carbon dioxide transport and the normal value. Then you can write about the different uh, modes of transport, the three important modes of transport and then draw dry diagram. And uh, regarding the amount of marks which is assigned for it, you can add additional points.